Joining me now is a wonderful actor, Tony Senzamichi. He is an entrepreneur, a businessman, a film and television actor, philanthropist, a man of many talents and a huge heart, <laughs> and my good friend. Tony, it's great to have you here. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Nancy. It's really good to be here. That's great. Well, Tony and I met this spring yes. um, on a wonderful film called Heaven Bound, mm -hmm. and that was the first time we've met, and we've now worked together twice. Yes. So let's just start off, tell us a little bit about Heaven Bound. Who do you play, and what's the film about? I play uh, an officer, Barney, of a, a small town, and uh, the cast of characters there, including yourself, uh, uh, you know, deals with um, some crazy antics of uh, some crime-ridden <laughs> individuals, <laughs> or hopefully. <laughs> We're very inept criminals, is what he's trying nicely to say. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so Barney, Officer Barney, Detective Barney comes and he tries to uh, set things right. So we first met on that set, yes. and then you were kind enough to introduce me to some producers on a new project. Tell us about the line. Sure. The, the line is uh, really, really exciting. has to do with uh, intrigue of deception and the government conspiracies and the likes of, you know, who's real and not real. <laughs> and what's fascinating to me about the line is it is taking the course of the new cutting edge TV series. This is a series for yes. TV for well for streaming tell us about the new delivery system that is the hope for the line well we're, we're hoping um, you know network distribution for sure but we also are looking at the other platforms such as you know the Netflix or Amazon Prime or Hulu we're looking forward to those uh, new media outlets that are just exploding right now for content yeah it's made it a whole new world out there when you have new opportunities to stream your content Oh, so, definitely yeah. definitely okay so you're a very busy actor one of the busiest actors I know oh, but goodness but you're coming back to this game. You started off in college. Yes. Uh, doing a play at Florida Southern College. We we're both Floridians. Yes. Woo! And uh, you did Arsenic and Old Lace. And then you spent 20 years in the business world, building businesses. And then yes. you've just come back into acting. So tell us what drew you back into this world. Well, I, I, I fell in love with acting on the stage and got out, uh, created uh, and started a business and was successful at doing medical uh, sales and supplies of a company that I had and started getting back into some church plays uh, mm -hmm. by a, a very well-known um, producer and uh, director and, you know, just really started to get the juices going again. Mm -hmm. and. You know, I started asking. I said, what do you think? And people said, you know, I think you should pursue it if that's your passion. And here I am. <laughs> and so how many years now have you been back into acting? I basically, I think you can say right now probably about seven or eight years I'm back wow. into it. And you've had tremendous success. You've had recurring roles in um, Magic City on network television mm -hmm. and Cross Threads. Right. Uh, Cross Threads is a pilot that were shot. Still looking for distribution for that. Uh, was really blessed to be on shows like Treme, where I was a recurring character. Working opposite Melissa Leo was phenomenal. Oh my gosh! You know, uh, the Emmy award-winning show Homeland. Working opposite Damian Lewis. Wow. And uh, just you know, some great people I've had a chance to work with, including you. Thank and, you. Uh, love Thank your you. friendship for sure. And uh, just really seeing where we go from here. So what are some of your most memorable times on set with some <laughs> people we may know and recognize? Have some favorites? Uh, I would think probably, um, you know, one of my recent episodes I did on NCIS mm. with, with Scott Bakula. And I had a really great time working with him. I mean, him and Zoe McClellan, as a matter of fact. And they really are so down to earth, really, really warm people. And uh, you, don't, you don't get that all the time. And it's nice to, to see that in people, especially yeah. when they're that caliber. It is great. And I do, I agree with you. I love Scott Bakula. I did a quantum leap yes. back in the day. Mm -hmm. And um, he was nice then. I'm glad to know he's still a lovely guy. He is. And we talked about quantum leap and we talked about, <laughs> you know, uh, 
Dean Stockwell that actually made an appearance yeah. back on, oh on NCIS. Oh, my gosh. How fun. Yes. Old uh, Home Week. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Wow. Well, speaking of Old Home Week, what are you doing here at Western Film Fair? What drew you here? Well, um, through your invitation <laughs> and meeting uh, Dr. Fred and, you know, discussing with him what, what I'm doing in my career as, as an actor and projects that we have coming out, uh, one being a gift horse that's being distributed right now uh, in Walmarts and everywhere, uh, mm. a, a gift horse. So uh, he would like to have uh, had that here for us. And then our new series, Dry Creek, America's First Frontier, uh, set in the 1880s about a small town and uh, a family that deals with uh, modern day problems, but dealt with in a, an early lifestyle uh, solution. And I'm especially fascinated by Dry Creek. We're here at Western Film Fair, and we're going to screen Dry Creek, yes. uh, one of the episodes, which I'm very excited to see. But as a Florida girl myself, I'm thrilled that Dry Creek is set in Florida. And what people may not know is that Florida was really um, the true frontier. Yes, it was. It was. The, like the second biggest cattle state yes. in the country. Yeah. And um, the true cowboys sort of came out of Florida. So um, you guys are featuring all that in Dry Creek. Exactly. I mean, you'll see alligators in our episodes. You'll see the blue herons. You'll see egrets. Mm -hmm. And and we didn't want to deter from that. You will see palm trees and the palmetto bushes because, you know, that life back then was so hard. And the people that settled Florida and the cattle that came to this country came through Florida. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're, we're using real life situations. Uh, one of our episodes uh, about Dr. Wall was a real character in Tampa Bay, Florida, that actually created and um, founded the cure for yellow fever. Wow. So we are actually using real life type stories uh, in our episodes as well. So it's historically accurate and going to be fascinating to anyone who loves westerns and loves history. So yes, and what are plans for Dry Creek? Well right now we uh, we have two episodes shot. We have uh, five episodes written. We're currently in negotiations and talks with a couple of networks and Lord willing we'll be on a, a network sometime this fall or spring. Oh that's great news. That's great. So what is on the horizon for you? What's next? Well, what's next for me is a, a film that we're getting ready to do in Kentucky mm. and uh, looking forward to do that. And actually just uh, was notified just the other day about a new uh, series, a pilot that I'm getting ready to shoot called The Running. Real great political drama, has all the twists and turns in it for intrigue and greed and jealousy and power. Wow. Yeah. So, Ooh. Ooh, I yeah. want to watch that. Yeah. That sounds good. Really neat. Play uh, District Attorney Bob uh, Dunning, so I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so you have produced as well as acted, and mm. you run the gamut from detectives <laughs> to bad guys to schizophrenics yes. that I know personally from the line <laughs> that we're working on together. How do you... How do you do all those ranges of things? What's your secret and technique for finding these characters? Wow. Um, you know, I really think, you know, as you know, as an actor to prepare for some of these type of roles, sometimes you, you really have to go deep into those, you know, those little pockets that we hide away. And however subtle those are, and then you start building and bringing that to life. And you start putting things, not only from your life in it, but other people's life's experience that you actually absorb into that. And, uh, and that's what starts bringing that color and those different layers to a character. Well, you certainly do that, Tony. You bring lots um. of life and lots of color to every role you play. <laughs> Thank you, And um, you also bring lots of life and goodness into the people in your community through a foundation uh -huh. that you and your wife Judy have founded. You've created Amici Charities, and tell us about that. Oh, thank you so much. Um, it's uh, very near and dear to our hearts, and my wife and I have been blessed. And, you know, through this downturn in the economy, uh, there's been so many things that have gone on, you know, people that have turned in their keys to their houses, their mm. car, their businesses. And we really felt that, you know, we've been blessed and we had to do something. And we felt that the Amici Charity gives an opportunity for us to, to give back to our community for people that, 
you know, just not out there seeking assistance. And, you know, you really don't know about this until it's really sometimes too late. Mm -hmm. And these are people that we are help bridge the gap, whether, you know, it's a mortgage payment or a light bill, or we've done things as far as help people with medication, be, you know, as they're getting transferred over to disability income and yeah. stuff like that. So we're just, uh, we're just trying to be a servant, just trying to help our next door neighbor. And, you know, we just want to do on to others. Well, you are certainly doing that, and if people are interested in coming alongside and, and supporting the Amici Foundation, how can they find out about you and how can they donate? Oh, great. Uh, you can contact us at amicicharity.us, and you can always get us online at amicicharity at aol.com for our email address, and we'd love to hear from you. Well, Tony, I have no doubt that it's your compassion and uh, your heart for other people that is founded in your love for God. Oh, I have you. no doubt. I'm going to cry. Um, you are a man of deep faith. And um, if you would just tell us a little about your faith journey. Wow. Um, you know, I was raised um, in Long Island, New York. Uh, went to church as a kid in a Catholic uh, church, and I love Catholics. Um, you know, and moved down to Florida some 35 years ago. And um, let's just say I, I lived a very colorful lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it got to the point where I really needed more. I needed I needed direction. I really needed to have an understanding of, you know, um, you know, what, what's it all about, Alfie? Mm -hmm. You know, and I really started going back to my roots and really asking God, what should I should, should I be doing? And mm -hmm. uh, really came to that conclusion that uh, my life without Him was nothing. That's great. And how many years now has this, has this walk been for you? Wow. Um, just before uh, I got married, I, I met my wife, uh, Judy, and she's um, a wonderful woman of God. We've been together it'll be 28 years. <laughs> That's great. Congratulations. <laughs> That's a feat right there. Yes, I'm proud is. of you. Thank you. And, you know, through her, my relationship with Judy, I, I, I became and got to know God, and my walk has been stronger. And uh, God has blessed us with uh, two great kids and a wonderful home and, you know, just uh, excited. And, you know, there's always turns and ups and downs. But, you know, uh, you know, as I was reading this morning, you know, God said, ask the spirit to pray your mind to be quiet, mm, to listen good. to me. That's good. Well, you certainly do that. I think you listen clearly to him. <laughs> well, thank you. And um, you have been a man who has solidly walked the walk and you have come back full circle to your greatest passion which is acting what advice would you give someone who is maybe wanting to embark on this career later in life well later in life I can certainly attest to that and I, I think really uh, what you need to do is understand you know what you want to do and there's a whole range of things that you can do in this entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. You know, as an actor, I would say the f first and foremost is get into a good acting class. Mm -hmm. it, it gives you the opportunity to experiment. And when I say a good acting class, I don't only mean good, but I mean a safe acting class. Mm -hmm. Something where you can get out there and test what you're trying to do and do your workshop and your scenes and and have the critique and criticism that is beneficial to you to grow as an actor mm -hmm. okay and let you want to try different things and that, i think that's some of the fear that i think uh, especially as adults that mm -hmm. you know we're we don't really necessarily like to change and if you just let some of that stuff go and experiment in these roles that you want to do uh, I think that's really important to understand who you are as an actor, but taking classes, workshops, studying is probably some of the most important things you can do. Absolutely. I agree wholeheartedly. Well, I'm so proud of you, Tony. Thank you for joining us here at Western Film Fair well, thank you, and Nancy. on Victory Television Network. And I'm looking forward, as are our viewers, to seeing what's next for Tony Senzamichi. Well, thank you so much, and I'm looking forward to working with this lady again. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.